Hi everyone, it's me again, Teacher Joan. Let us have another lesson in general mathematics. So the topic in this video is all about graphs of 1 to 1 and its inverse. So for this lesson, the learning objectives are the following. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the relationship of graphs of inverse functions and represent an inverse function through its table of values and graph. To attain the learning objectives, we need to answer the essential question, how to represent an inverse function through its table of values and graph. To begin with, let us identify the relationship that exists between the graphs of 1 to 1 and inverse function. Graphs of 1 to 1 and inverse. The graph of f of x and f inverse of x are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Take a look at these two examples. As we can see here on this first graph, we have x squared and its inverse is squared of x. As we can see here, these two graphs are symmetrical with the line y equals x, which is an identity function. When we say symmetrical, one way to check is by checking the points. Let's say here on this graph, we have this point, which represents 4 and 2. On our second graph, we should have the inverse of 4, 2, which is 2, 4, which is at this point. Okay? And looking at the other graph, these two graphs are also symmetrical with respect to y equals x. f of x and f inverse of x are like mirror images. And for you to be able to check if they are really mirror images, flip about the diagonal. Imagine that you are flipping these graphs, okay, and you will see that they will coincide if you flip x squared to x squared root of x. Same is true with this. If we're going to flip about the diagonal, okay, this graph will coincide with this graph. So that's the relationship of the graphs of 1 to 1 and inverse. So how to graph an inverse function? Take note that in graphing an inverse function, it is just similar with how to graph any function. So here are the steps. First, identify its domain and range of the given 1 to 1 function. So finding the domain and range of 1 to 1 will be our guide in sketching the graph of 1 to 1 and the inverse function. So second, complete the table of values then sketch the graph of 1 to 1 function on the Cartesian coordinate plane. Third, find the inverse function and determine the domain and range of the inverse by looking at the domain and range of 1 to 1. Fourth, make the table of values for the inverse function. You may just simply interchange the x and f of x values from the 1 to 1 and then sketch the graph on the same plane. First example, to sketch the graph of f of x is equal to 3x plus 1 and its inverse. In order to do this, let's follow the steps provided in the previous slide. So as we can see here, we have a linear function. And as we all know, the domain and range of a linear function are both sets of real numbers. So we have set of x such that x is an element of real number for the domain. And for the range, we have set of y such that y is an element of real number. Next step is to create a table of values. And in doing that, we can use any real number for x and then we'll be able to find the values of f of x. Let's have five values, x and f of x. But actually, you may have less than five or you may have more than that. It is up to you. Let's say we have negative two, negative one, zero, 1 and 2 as the values of x. So for the f of x values, again, substitute each x value to our function to find f of x. For an example, let x be negative 2. 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Next, we have negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus 1 gives us negative 2. And do the same procedure here. So if we have x equals 0, that's 1, x equals 1, that's 4, and x equals 2, that is 7. After having the table of values for our given function, 
let us now plot the points on our Cartesian coordinate plane. So if we have negative 2, it has negative 5 for f of x, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 1, 4, and 2, 7. Next, let us connect these points. So here is the gap of f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. Since this is a linear function, we can extend the endpoints infinitely. Next is to find the inverse function of 3x plus 1. So for the inverse, we need to follow the four steps. We have y is equal to 3x plus 1. Interchange x and y. So we have x is equal to 3y plus 1. We need to solve for y. So isolate this. We have x minus 1 is equal to 3y. Divide both sides by 3. Cancel. Change y to f inverse of x is equal to x minus 1 over 3. So here is now our inverse. So again, for our inverse, we have x minus 1 over 3. And for the domain and range of this, we base it on the domain range of our given function. Since it's linear, we have domain and range for this inverse as set of real numbers as well. As for the table of values, instead of plugging in values of x to our function and then solve for the value of f of x, we will just simply interchange the x and f of x from the previous function. So if you still remember the x and f of x, we have negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, and 7 as the values of f of x. Okay, so here it will become the values of x, and then the values of x will become the values of f of x. So we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let us now plot these points on our Cartesian coordinate plane. So we have negative 5, negative 2, it's here. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 4, 1, and 7, 2. Okay, let's see, this is 7, and here is 2. Next, we need to connect all the dots. Then, okay. So here is the graph of our inverse. And looking at these two graphs, okay, let us see if they are symmetrical with respect to our identity function. We're in whatever x value you have. Now let us see if these two graphs are symmetrical with respect to the identity function y equals x. Let us now sketch the graph of our identity function, our basis of symmetrical. Now, look at our graphs. Are they symmetrical with respect to this? Yes or no? Imagine that you are flipping this Cartesian plane with respect to this diagonal line. Will they overlap? It's a yes. Okay? So this is how we sketch the graph of 1 to 1 and inverse. So in summary, we have the following information. So we have the domain and range of the given function. We also have the inverse and the domain and range. And we have their graphs. So for these graphs, I use GeoGebra, okay, to show to you the relationship of the given function 3x plus 1 and its inverse x minus 1 over 3. Let's have another example. Sketch the graph of f of x is equal to negative square root of x plus 2 and its inverse. So again, the first thing that we will do is to find the domain and range. So since it's radical, take note that there are values that are restricted for the radicand. Okay? Again, the radicand cannot be negative. So for the domain, we need to do x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. 
So here we have set of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So as for the range, for every real number for x, there corresponds a value of y that is less than or equal to 0. Now let us create a table of values for this function. So we have x and f of x. Take note that the values of x should be greater than or equal to negative 2. So let's say we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. To find the values of f of x, we need to plug in each x value to our function. So by doing that, we will be having 0, negative 1, negative 1.41, negative 1.73, and negative 2. So the next thing that we'll do is to plot all of these points. This portion can be extended going to the right because it says here x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But for this portion, we cannot. This is the starting point of the values of x, negative 2. Now, let us find the inverse of our function, negative square root of x plus 2. So for the inverse, we need to follow the same procedure, change f of x to y. So negative square root of x plus 2. Next, interchange the variables. x is equal to negative square root of y plus 2. Since y is inside the radical, we need to take the square root of both sides. So we now have x squared is equal to what will happen here. Square cancel the radical. The square of negative becomes positive, so we have y plus 2. Next, isolate y, so we have x squared minus 2 equals y. And the inverse here is f inverse of x equals x squared minus 2. To make the table of values for this inverse function, we are not going to think of other values of x and f of x. Instead, we will just simply interchange the x and f of x of the given function. So here, we have 0, negative 1, negative 1.41, negative 1.73, and negative 2 as the values of x. And we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2 as the values of f of x. The next step is to plot all of these points. Next step is to plot all of these points. Now, let us identify what part of this inverse function needs to be extended. First, let us identify the domain of this function by using the range of the given function. So we have set of x such that x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, now as we can see in our domain, we have less than or equal to 0. Meaning, we have to start from 0, then goes left because of the symbol less than. So, meaning to say, this portion of the graph cannot be extended going up or going down or going to the right. Because this is the starting point of our domain and it goes left. So, this is the portion of our graph that can be extended. Now, to check if this two are really symmetrical with respect to our identity function. Let us draw the identity function now, y equals x. Let us use this as our guide. Let us see if they are symmetrical with respect to this line, y equals x. Imagine that you are flipping this Cartesian plane with respect to the diagonal line. Okay, will these two coincide? And the answer is yes. Okay, so they are really symmetrical. Now, for the range of this function, we base it on the domain of our f of x that gives us set of y such that y 
is greater than or equal to negative 2. Is this really true on our graph? Yes, it is. From negative 2, then the graph goes upward continuously. Were you able to follow how to sketch the graph of 1 to 1 and its inverse function? I hope so. Now, after showing you how to sketch the graph of 1 to 1 and its inverse, it is now time to test your understanding. Do this activity. Graph the given function, then find the inverse and sketch its graph, then state their domain and range. You may pause the video so you could do this. In order for you to check if you did it right, you may use any graphing software to check your answers. So for this lesson, take note of the following. The graph of the function and its inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x or the identity function. f of x and f inverse of x are like mirror images. So to sketch the graph of 1 to 1 and its inverse, you may follow the following steps. So here's the end of our lesson. I hope you have learned a lot on the graphs of 1 to 1 and its inverse. So again, if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button, like this video, turn on the notification bell to be updated. Bye everyone! See you on our next video!